six years ago. On a stage very similar to this one, I arrived in Amsterdam to present Prezi for the very first time. It was one of those startup competitions where there were 3,000 entrepreneurs wanting to compete with their own pitch. So was I. And I knew I had to make it stand out because I had convinced my good friend to leave his PhD program just six months before he was going to graduate. I have moved from the country where I was born, Sweden, to Hungary, where my parents were from. And everyone told me, don't take this on in the middle of a big recession. And if I failed this pitch, I were going to prove all my critics wrong. So I knew I had to get on that stage and make it count. Only there are 3,000 people in sneakers just like myself. How do I do that? And I got this really brilliant idea, which was to put a suit and a tie on. Not Lederhosen, a suit and a tie. And a mere age of 29, I already looked as if I was 50. But I had a great plan, because I was going to take that tie. And as I was going to get on that stage, I was going to tell people that ties are like slides are. They can be confining. But if you break away from the ties and the slides, and a whole new world of creativity opens up. And I was going to start strangling myself. And I had prepared the moderator with a pair of scissors so that he could come and help me cut off the tie and reveal Prezi to the world. And so I started strangling myself and noticed that there was one factor that I had failed to recognize, which was that the moderator might be sitting and flirting with this girl. We were going to take on Apple, Microsoft, and Google. Everyone's back in Budapest thinking that I'm going to kill it. Six thousand eyeballs staring at me as I'm strangling myself with a tie. My feet are getting wet from sweat. And I can only think about how am I going to make it through these next five minutes. When I got off the stage, I was very happy to do so. And then the moderator finally came up and asked what he was supposed to be doing all the time. So how many of you would be willing to actually pay for this product? And half of the audience raised their hand. That was the first time that we knew that we were on to something big. And from there on, everything went really quick. You know, we got investments, we opened up offices around the world, we now have 250 people working for Prezi, and with 60 million people creating presentations, we have the world's largest database of publicly available presentations. At this stage, you even get fans. And that is the straight and narrow path to entrepreneurial success, right? Mm -mm. Not for us, at least. In fact, if I would have really paid attention to what happened on that stage in Amsterdam, I could have avoided a lot of mistakes that we then were doing in the next few years. When we first started with Prezi, one of the often feedbacks we got was that Prezi is great, but it takes a lot of time to make great prezies. Okay. We thought to ourselves, why don't we do what all internet companies do? We started maniacally measuring every single click of a user, because that's how you fix your product. And we built this strategy. It was called Quick Prezi. 
And we realized through analyzing all these clicks that the best way of helping people to get their presentation done really quickly was to let them jot down a couple of bullet points and then get on stage. And as we predicted, registrations went up. And to our surprise, those users using Quick Prezi did not stay. What was going on? We were giving people everything they wanted, yet not what they needed? We had to take a big step back and do something more unusual. Sit down and talk with our users. And when you talk to your users, the most surprising things come up. Like, for example, the fact that when you do presentations, you can experience the entire emotional range of what it means to be alive. If you are successful one day, then you can be a true hero. And how does it feel if you fail? Like the way my beginning did on that Amsterdam, uh, Amsterdam stage? It can be pretty horrible. It may be the worst day of your life. In fact, we found research that showed that when people were asked, what are the things that they are most afraid of? On number seven was dying. You know, cancer, Alzheimer's, in California, sharks biting you. Number seven. What was number one? Failing in front of an audience. And then we began to understand why Quick Prezi didn't succeed, because have you guys ever gone to one of those meetings where somebody pulls up a slide and there's a ton of bullet points there and everyone around the table go numb? When audiences see a lot of bullet points, they tend to disengage. And when your audience disengages when you are a presenter, it feels like dying. Okay, so now we actually know how we could destroy the Prezi experience, but we still didn't know how could we improve it. It was, again, our users that was going to help us realize what we could do. I want to show you guys a video that helped to bring a lot of inspiration for us to understand why Prezi could be a good tool, even. Take a look at this video. It's like party time. It's fun. It's fun. I really enjoy it. Both sophisticated and fun. Oh, mm -hmm. definitely. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Of course, it's like, oh, great, you know, I can just my sleep and it works. Yeah. But Prezi's party time. It's like, you know, the music jam and so I got a nice beat going down. <laughs> okay, let's do put the iTunes running in the background. A lot of times I'll do that. Yeah. I got some great music going on and I'm doing my Prezi like, whoa, you know, and it inspires me that way. Never. I would never think of running music in the background <laughs> because with I have to stay within the blinds. Mm -hmm. And Prezi is in the lines. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Thanks to this user, we began to understand that if people would have fun while developing their presentations, then actually they could sort out their ideas a little bit better, make themselves understood more, and audiences would actually remember more of their stories. And then we sat down with some cognitive scientists to really try to understand what the heck was going on here? How could Prezi have this effect? So I want to illustrate this with you guys right now. Uh, and I want you all to think about five kitchen appliances in your home. So machines that you use to you know, make things work in your kitchen, okay? Five of those, and when you're ready, just raise your hand, okay? Try it out, five things.
Good, good. The cogwheels are spinning up. You got your five things in your kitchen? Good. I'm wondering if somebody could help me to come over to one of these microphones. One of you guys who raised your hand, could you come over to the microphone, please? Maybe the lady in the pink, uh, in the pink costume, would you mind joining? Did you think of five things? Okay, we have somebody joining. Great, thank you. Hello. Hi. What's your name? Christina. Nice to meet you, Christina. Nice what were the five things that you thought of? Coffee machine. OK. Toaster. Great. Um, dishwasher. Uh-huh. Knives. Yes. And um, water boiler. Great. Now, Christina. Uh, um, I imagine that what you just did in order to remember those five things is you imagined your kitchen and then you saw your counter and on the counter there was a coffee machine. Is that right? Yes. Okay. Christina, stay there just for a second. Uh, but first, I have some good news for you. Um, you are like most people. Um, and here's the thing. What we learned from the cognitive scientists was that uh, we remember and understand information through two important cues. Okay, so one is the visual of the, say, coffee machine, right? Um, most people know this, put pictures in your presentations, right? And then another thing that we didn't know about appeared, which was that it's not just visuals that are really important, but it turns out that the position of things is really important as well. The fact that this coffee machine happens to be next to the mixer, on the counter, in the kitchen, helps me to remember that coffee machine as much as what it looks like. OK, so inadvertently with Prezi, we had created a tool that helped people not just to put in a lot of nice pictures, but to illustrate how different pictures related to each other. Because if you zoomed in, you could show how the two things related to each other. If you zoomed out, you could even show context. Where are these things? And it really helps audiences to understand and retain information. Christina, one last question. I guess that what you didn't do is you didn't list out or spell a bunch of words, did you? Like neither bullet pointed or alphabetized or anything like that. No, I didn't. Thanks, Christina. So um, <laughs> how many of you are like Christina? You didn't do this when you tried to remember five things in your kitchen. Probably the vast majority of people who tried to remember things didn't do that. Well, you see, this is what we created with Quick Prezi. And Quick Prezi, as I mentioned to you, is not a great way of being understood and remembered. And now we began to understand really how to make Prezi successful. You see, People have different needs, and they can be contradicting in nature. Sometimes you just want to get your presentation done really quickly, and bullet points help you with that. On the other hand, if you're getting on a stage, or you have a deal you have to close, and a lot, is, a lot at stake, then you're not there because you're using a fun tool. Your aspiration is to be understood, to be remembered, to influence people, maybe change their mind about something. So my short-term goal of just getting my presentation done 
can be in total opposition to why I actually go and make a presentation. At this point, it's not about the tool. It's my aspiration of what I would like to be. And we realized that the difference between creating inspiring customer experiences and numbing one was the ability for us to find balance between these things. Depending on the context, we had to give people quick wins. And if there was a lot at stake, we had to help people to realize how they could become really effective communicators. And so you might think that this is a challenge that Prezi has. But I'm here to tell you that you probably have the same challenge right now. Take a company like Facebook as an example. They have a billion users. They figured it all out, right? Well, last week, uh, I got 26 different likes on this posting that I did. Um, I was pretty happy with it. My PR people tell me that I need to post better articles. Um, and it made me feel a little bit good. But I also had very different experiences with Facebook. Like for example, this April, when my best friend from high school appeared on my newsfeed. Alexandra is her name, and I was notified that it's her birthday. I hadn't spoke to Alexandra for a long time, and I started chatting with her immediately. And we started reminiscing of the good old times in Sweden when we would every week fight about whose house we will watch X-Files at. Why did we have to fight about that? Well, the loser would have to get on his or her bike and go home in the dark Swedish forests with imminent threat of alien abduction. Yeah, you didn't want to lose that fight, but thanks to Facebook, I ended up buying a ticket to northern parts of Sweden, close to the polar circle, just to reconnect with one of my best friends. And having deep and meaningful relationships with my friends is an aspiration that I have. So for me, Facebook gave a really great experience. But for this woman, who I just read the blog post off, not really. Uh, this woman writes that she's closing the book on Facebook. Why does she do that? Well, she says that she's noticing that while she's liking a lot of posts and you know, following who other people get likes and whatnot, she's noticing that Facebook is keeping her from doing her work. It even keeps her from doing her hobbies. What was most ironic for her was noticing that despite Facebook was supposed to be something that helped her to keep her friendship relationships, she found herself liking other people's posts while sitting and having dinner with her friends and family. For her, Facebook had optimized the amount of clicks they could get, yet not helped her to really achieve the deep and meaningful friendship relationships she desired to have. Okay, so you might think that this is a challenge for all internet companies who are maniacally measuring clicks, yeah? Mm. I think this is a challenge even for companies that have nothing to do or very little with the internet. I took a look at six companies that you might recognize uh, and three of these won against the three others. And I have to admit uh, that um, it's a little bit awkward to be on a stage in Munich and talk a shit about Adidas, which I'm about to do. Um, but here what you see is the um, 
um, essentially the share prices and their development from 2006 to 2014 for Adidas, Dunkin' Donuts, and Pepsi. Let's take a look at the companies that they lost against. Nike, Starbucks, and Coca-Cola. And then let's take a look at what these companies have to say about their missions. So, let's begin with Adidas. Adidas is a group that strives to be the global leader in the sporting goods industry with brands built on passion for sports and sporting lifestyle. Okay. Sounds good enough. Are you guys getting inspired? One guy, good. Let's take a look at the uh, uh, comparison to Nike. Nike says, that they want to bring inspiration and innovation to every athlete in the world. And if you've got a body, you're an athlete. Pretty good start, in my view. And of course, I'm not saying now that it's enough for you guys to put the word inspiration in your mission statement to, in order for you to make a successful company, right? But Here's an interesting thing. All three companies that won had the word inspiration in their mission statement. And I would argue that these companies managed to make it not just a mission statement, but a way that they were running their companies. Take a look at, for example, my typical experience of going into a Dunkin' Donut coffee shop. I often have the feeling that it's a low-rent place where I'm supposed to get in and out as quickly as possible. And take a look at those chairs. Now let's compare that with my experience in Starbucks. Usually nice chairs, there's some music. When I go and have my coffee, I get my name written on my cup. I can stay for a minute and have my coffee, or I can stay for hours and do work. If you were to ask me who I aspire more to be like, a Dunkin' Donuts guy or a Starbucks guy, well, I guess... You guys know what the answer would be. And here's the thing. Building inspirational customer experience is really hard. There is no one single solution. It's a culmination of thousand little things that make you feel good about an experience. But when you do, it has an impact on the bottom line. And so doing inspirational things as a company is a wise thing to do if you want to build a big business, but is it the right thing to do? For us, Prezi, a company that works in productivity, we want to help people to have better work lives. Right? Productivity. Yet when you ask people if they feel engaged with their work, then you find out this. 90% of all people asked about their work say they are disengaged from their work. 90%. 9 out of 10 people it strikes me as bizarre that we spend so much time creating creative work environments for ourselves in the IT industry. Have you guys gone to one of those cool offices, Google or Prezi even? And yet, when it comes to understanding our users and what they need to live fulfilled lives, we treat them as eyeballs with the ability to click. 
No wonder they go numb. Now, of course, Prezi can't fix every company culture and everything in the world, but do I think that Prezi can help people to have more fun when they create presentations and more fun when they give them? Of course. And we know how to do it. We should measure the clicks because they help us to understand the short-term goals of our users. But if we stop short, then we don't understand what's at stake for them because it has nothing to do with the clicks. And if we don't understand the aspirations of our users that has nothing to do with clicks or our tool, then how would we be able to go beyond treating people as anonymous eyeballs with the ability to click? And how would we get to really understand them as real people who we are proud of to work for? That is the invitation I have for you. Help your users shine by understanding them, and you will do well as a company as well. Thank you. Peter, if you don't mind, I'd like you to answer one or two questions out of the auditorium. Is there anybody like, who would like to address a question to Peter? We have microphones set up all over the place, so just to make sure that you raise your hand. OK, let's take one up in front here. We'll repeat it. OK, and the question? The question. So I can repeat the yes. question. So the question is, in very brief, how can we break the PowerPoint power <laughs> in the corporate world? It, it is true that we are uh, very popular in education where there is less kind of a rigid uh, in environment and in, in corporations it's a little bit harder because there are all this infrastructure surrounding you know the tools that we use um, at the end of the day I think what what really is happening today is that the internet is coming in and it's becoming a major equalizer switching costs are going down and so if that truly happens then I think the result of that will be that the best products will win. And what we have to do as Prezi in order to convince more corporations to go away from the bullet points is to A, help them to understand that when they use those bullet points, they are actually really ineffective. There are a lot of meeting times today that are being wasted. I can tell that there are some people agree with that. And the other thing is that we actually have the power to do so much more when we understand and connect the dots. And it's that power that will help us to resolve humanity's biggest challenges, whether that's environmental issues or the next version of a next car. We need better ways of removing all the data and introducing meaning into what we are doing. Uh, hello. Yeah. Hi, Peter. Um, I just wanted to ask, um, how is Prezi looking towards integrating with other co collaboration and productivity tools? We have been very heads down in essentially um, building our, out our platform and making the ideas come front and center instead of um, instead of integrating with other companies. But now we are actually at a stage where that is becoming more and more, um, we have more and more time to do such projects. So I think we will see more of that in the future. And if you guys have ideas of 
things we should be doing, you should let us know. Okay, uh, we have to like look at the we're over time already. Peter, thank you so much. That was such an inspirational keynote. Please give him a big hand. I, it was just really, really such thank a good you. presentation. Thank you so thank much. You. Thank you, Peter. Peter, bye.